How's it going? It's your boy, uh, fuck, forgot my name for a second, Jan Michael Vincent, and uh, I'm back, uh, well, whenever the fuck I want, really, because it's been, this is uh, two weeks now since the last episode, and uh, you know, with how I've been doing up here, you you should Thank you, Lucky Stars, you're getting any of these episodes. So let's just press play here and see what we got. Guess what? Montage. Every f- fucking beginning of every episode. Oh my god, that woman has got... Oh, that woman's got a nice, nice rack. Wow. All right, anyway, just to make sure you're listening to uh, Season 1, Episode 8, uh, Fight Like a Dove. Which is an uh, ironic title, right? That's how uh, people in Hollywood think they're clever. Just uh, say something like "fight like a dove" or "oh, I can skip the intro." I didn't know that. Okay, I skip the intro, everybody. Skip the intro. Okay, if you're seeing a computer screen. It says file A fifty six seven W. All right. That's me. Sinjin. Sinjin Hawk. Or Sink John. That box uh, top left with the cello, that looked like a, a video game of some sort. <laughs> so does that Ernie one. Maybe this is like from the Nintendo game. Which I never made a f- cock sucking penny on, by the way. Fucking agent really fucked that deal up, let me tell you. Alright, there's a fake shot of the Eiffel Tower or something, because they definitely did not fly us to fucking pay- gay Perry to film this episode. This is the uh, back lot of Universal. It's the magic of movies, everybody. There you go. Get your fucking dick hard thinking you're in Paris, but nope. Just a fucking valley. This guy, the guy in the uh, rumpled uh, suit, uh, he told some of the most racist jokes at lunch. I mean, I don't want to rat the guy out, and hopefully nobody in his family ever hears this, but I'm telling you, that guy... Jesus Christ, I mean, I'm an alcoholic who eventually lost my leg, and, you know, I I'm, I don't like to hear, uh, you know, those kind of, that kind of body talk. Did he stab him? I think he stabbed him. I mean, that's, that's terrible. That was terrible acting. Chocolate looks good, though, right? Chocolate looks like C's candy at the Grove. Sometimes when uh, Jan Michael was between jobs, you know, snorting up the uh, SAG 401k, you know, sometimes I'd have to go to uh, get my meals at C's Candies. Because they give out those, uh, they'll give out free samples all the live long day. I mean, you just keep asking them and they'll, I, I don't know if it's store policy or whatever, but they, they never say no. They just keep handing you chocolate. I don't know how that company makes money, but that's what I had to do. It's at certain points in my life. I just couldn't afford a, a hot meal or whatever. So I just walked around the grove for nine and a half hours periodically st- Stopping at the seas and getting a uh, milk chocolate buttercream or uh, some toffee, you know. If I didn't give two shits, if it was in my teeth all the rest of the day. And I would, and you know, I was friendly with all the security guards there, so they didn't care, you know. Sometimes I'd fall asleep on a bench or behind some bushes in front of uh, the Sabaro that was there.
It's a little drama right here off the top. Yeah, it looks like an airwolf's going down or something. Oh, shit, I left my cigarettes over on the coffee table. You just keep watching. I'll be back in a few. I don't think anybody's watching this fucking piece of shit show anyway. Sip of Strohs. All right, where are we now? Things still flying around. Hope everyone had a uh, good couple weeks while we were gone. I don't really don't even have any uh, dramatic story as to why uh, I didn't record last week. I just I just plum fucking forgot. My um, sleep is finally starting to get a little regulated, you know, the time difference of Earth and then, uh, you know, celestial time, so that's good. Still got a little bit of existential dread, just knowing I'm going to be here for eternity and, uh, you know. Woman behind a big fake rock. Hello. That's just good, you know, sexual politics sort of humor. I mean, she's really pushing those tits out there, isn't she? Oh, here we go with the Nazi stuff. I mean, every fucking week, you can't escape it. Nazi this, Nazi that. I mean, don't we ever think to make the Japanese the bad guys or the Russians the bad guys or... I don't know. I mean, don't get me wrong, the Nazis were... Uh... Terrible, but I'm not talking about real life stuff. I'm talking about from a creative standpoint. <clears throat> real life, I mean, the you, you don't get worse than the the old Krauts, but uh, I'm just saying, you know, could we make movies about other things? I guess not. Now, I never knew if that was actually a true thing, that uh, a 
lot of those Nazis uh, snuck in in South America or whatever and were living there, living the rest of their days. I guess some of that was true, right? I mean, it would have to be very suspicious, you would think, that all of a sudden, by 1946, there were a lot more Germans in uh, Brazil or wherever they were, you know, and uh, just look a little, looks a little fishy, you know. Um, yeah, I just couldn't imagine. I couldn't imagine living with myself after uh, being uh, a part of those atrocities, you know. My agent said that to me once. He said, you're not really in the business. I said, what are you talking about? I've been in like 90 movies. He goes, yeah, but uh, have you looked at the last 20? I mean, they're, uh, they're real pieces of crap, you know? In fact, let me. I'm just going to read some of these down because who gives a f- flying fuck about the uh, plot of this show, you know? Okay, let me, all I'm saying is, let me guess, by the end I catch this guy. Okay, here we go. Alright, so, uh, you know, always go uh, post Ice Cream Man, because that's when shit really uh, went sour, you know? So I was in a movie called The Last Kill from 1996. While a, while a repetitive hooker killer eludes police, they feel the wrath of their chief who gets heat from the mayor. This is a run-on sentence if I've ever heard one. Fearing that his record against crime is in jeopardy in his simultaneous re-elected campaign. That is a terrible sentence. That that one co-starred Joe Estevez, who will literally be in anything. I mean, he's what he's. Uh, I mean, he's been in the worst movies, including all of those Rollerblade Seven pieces of garbage that even I turned down. I was like, I'm not going to be in these at all, you know. Same year, I was in a movie called, a TV movie, by the way, called Lethal Orbit. With uh, Joe Estevez again and Casper Van Dien. And a group of recently trained astronauts are sent into space to probe a new experiment. Only to be stranded and face an eternity in space unless successful contact can be established from... From where? I lost it here. From Earth. In between flashes of the story, a court is in process determining the cause of the accident. Never even saw it. It's a 3 out of 10 on uh, IMDb. Then I did Jurassic Women, where I played a character named Zep. Zep. Z- uh, this, is, this is Zep reporting to duty. Uh, Jurassic Women, a meteor shower causes a spaceship crash on a remote planet populated by beautiful and dangerous women as well as cavemen. All procreation has been forbidden as there is a war between man and woman. Sounds like Earth now. But when a woman and an astronaut fall in love, the spaceship's jealous captain joins the cavemen and a fight ensues. Well, what do you think? You think that was a winner? 3.6 out of 10 on uh, IMDb. Um, you know, just, just the bottom of the barrel. And I mean, I got paid probably 75 grand, which, you know, after agents and managers and lawyers and court fees and, uh, you know, child support and, uh, gambling bets and, uh, you know, just, uh, uh, hookers rolling me over and taking my money as I'm passed out. 
I think I cleared about 800 bucks. All right, we're, we're, what happened? I really got sidetracked there. We're still in this fucking rock with this British broad. Jesus Christ, I fucking humiliated myself with my filmography to kill time, and I feel like that didn't kill any time. I feel like I'm going to have to be watching these episodes for the rest of eternity up here in heaven. So you don't understand, they they asked to uh, that I provide commentary in every language. So after I'm done with this, I have to do the Spanish version, but the hook is I got to learn Spanish. I don't speak any of it. And so, you know, because the peacock was like, well, look, You've got time up there. You ain't going anywhere. And, you know, content is king down here. That's not going anywhere. And this Peacock network is going to always exist. And Airwolf is always going to be streaming somewhere. So we're in no hurry. Learn Spanish and record the commentary. Then learn French and record the commentary. Then learn Russian and record the commentary. Then learn Chinese and record the commentary. And then learn Japanese and record the commentary. Then learn Swahili and record the commentary. And that's just a fraction of them. How long do you think that's going to take me? To learn a dozen languages and then record every single episode. It's going to take a goddamn long time, isn't it? Bean. Oh man, did I have some times in Baja? I got a hooker uh, in Baja pregnant once one summer that was a whole ordeal I mean because she was not gonna get an abortion so uh, you know I gave her a fake number and I just left it at that I just rolled the dice man that she wasn't gonna be able to figure out who I was and how to get a hold of me and you know because I told her my name was Tom Collins or because I what I was drinking at the time I was just uh guzzling that classic drink and um she didn't know she didn't know that who i was and that i had been in such classic movies as jurassic women and lethal orbit and uh you know we tried we did protection but i just bursted right through that thing um you know not to brag or anything but you know Jan Michael had a rather large package. And so I just, I came, I pulled out with a busted rubber and, uh, you know, whatever. And, and I sort of just, you know, uh, I hung around for like a couple more months in that town, you know, kind of just soaking it up and doing whatever. But she, uh, she came to me and said uh, she was late in Spanish. Sam, I don't speak any 
language. I don't speak it still, so. But I, I knew what was up, you know. And no matter the language, you can see it in a woman's eyes when that shit is uh, happening. So, uh, I found a little boy kicking a soccer ball, you know, outside. And I brought him over, and he spoke both languages. So, I, uh, you know, I had him feed her a bunch of nonsense say uh you know i was gonna take care of her and bring her to the states and uh you know her life was gonna be much improved and i would take care of the child and uh i mean by the time he was done translating i was already on my triumph motorcycle and heading towards the border so uh i you know look i I never said i'm a perfect guy i really uh hope that that all turned out all right, that, you know, that that's 20 some years ago. So that kid's I hope he's a fine adult or she is a fine adult or whatever they, uh, you know, I just wasn't going to, I wasn't mature enough at, you know, 48 or 49 or however old I was to take care of the situation like a man. And I just, I got out of here, you know, Is this guy supposed to be German? Because I am not. Like a 87 Toyota. I'm not buying it. <laughs> Is that supposed to be Palestine he's talking about? They used to have a word for uh, a scene like that. Let me just say, uh, I'll be PC and say theatrical. I mean, my God. I was laying it on a little thick, wasn't it? This is Airwolf or General Hospital. Oh boy. Just fucking shoot some missiles, baby. Oh. Now. I mean, Archangel is right there. He knows better than anybody. You can't shoot this fucking thing. Why didn't he say anything? Well, sweetheart, you ain't flying Airwolf, are you? You're just a backseat flyer. You're sitting in the front seat, but you get the fucking point I'm making.
Oh, see. Now, uh, Ernie was actually drinking coffee here. It's, uh, look, I'm kind of out of stories. I'm not going to lie to you. But anyway, but it's, that's the thing about Ernest Borgnine. He made a hell of a cup of coffee. He, uh, he was one of the first to kind of do the whole uh, organic, uh, f- small free trade or fair trade or something, uh, beans. And, uh, yeah, he said he had a gardener or something who came from a family of uh, coffee bean uh, growers. And uh, so he was he was flying that stuff in. And Ernie was uh, at first selling it at the uh, Hollywood Farmer's Market on Sundays. And uh, I remember I was on a stroll because uh, <clears throat> I had just left uh, Musso and Frank's because every once in a while they would just let me sleep there and uh, you know I was walking through that market hoping to buy an orange or an apple and there's Ernie Borgnine selling uh, his own brand of coffee and this is this is actually before we even did Airwolf but I said, you know, Ernie, what the hell are you doing here, man? He's, uh, he's like, I, you know, I'm, I'm a big coffee guy. I like to sell coffee. And I said, you, you got a goddamn Oscar, you know. You're still a viable actor in the industry. Yeah, I know, but I like to sell coffee. And I was like, just, oh my god. Anyway, but he gave me one on the house because, uh, again, I had gotten rolled the night before, and someone took all my money. And boy, that thing, that thing kept me awake till uh, the late evening. I mean, it was a strong cup of black coffee. Twenty-four hours. I did a movie once, uh, one of this, one of these like low budget drags. I don't even remember the uh, title of it, but uh, anyway, I was playing a rogue cop, and I was on the hunt for a uh, dangerous killer. I remember, and you know, I I did things my own way. I kind of broke procedure a lot, or you know, whatever, and. Uh, I remember they did this scene where. You know, I'm supposed to see the police chief, and he's like, you got you got 24 hours or I'm going to take your badge. And, uh, you know, then a couple more scenes in the movie. And uh, I noticed that the shooting day, we weren't, I was still playing a cop, and I, and I pulled the director over, and I said, hey, remember, the chief said I had 24 hours. Has, has it not been 24 hours in this the movie world? And he goes, shit, you're right. So we had to call that chief back in, you know, and we did another scene. But this time we had him say, okay, I'm going to give you 48 hours. And then I'm going to take your badge. Or no, he goes, I'm going to give you 24 more hours. And then I'm going to take your badge. Same thing happens again. We're shooting scenes. I mean, the direct, this hack, I mean, Jesus Christ, if I'm, I'm barely even paying attention to my lines and what the hell I'm doing. So we had to bring the guy in again, and he does it all again. He goes, all right. I think my character name is McClanahan or Zinkbud or something. And he goes, uh, that's another 24 hours. I was, and so I finally improvised, you know. And I said, so you're going to give me another... That's 40, that's, what the hell? My alarm just went off and, uh, oh shit, really stepped on that punchline, didn't it? God damn it.
I mean, way to kill the fucking joke. Jesus. Well, anyway, I was going to do this whole, uh, you know, the guy had given me 96 hours or something, but fucking blew that shit right out of the fucking water. You guys going to mind if I eat a little chips and hummus? Oh, uh, we don't mind, Jay and Michael. Do whatever you want. We're just thankful to have this great piece of content you're giving us. Please enjoy it. Thank you, I will. Hungry, I mean, I just haven't really eaten all day. Did I hear somebody say I can't trust a Nazi? I mean, there's some truth to that, that's for sure. Like clockwork, here comes the montage. Seven minutes of action packed adventure. Pick the wrong time to get a snack. This is the moment in the show when I should be flapping my gums. About to get you. I am still amazed. A helicopter, regardless of how souped up it is, could outmaneuver, flank, and shoot fighter jets. That's not me discrediting the show I was on. Babies. I 
again, this is the universal lot where they have that that pond. It's part of the uh, the tram uh, tour. That guy's fingernails really fucked up in it. Is this woman supposed to be giving him a massage? I mean, that is. I know that's just extra work, but come on. Took me a long time on set to uh, say ingenuity. I mean, that was just a hard word for me to say, and uh, yeah, it's not even a ten cent word. And fucking crew was not uh, kind either that day. I remember a lot of them snickering, and because I kept saying. Uh, instead of in- ingenuity, I kept saying ingenuity. Ingenuity. Anyway, we found we had a lot of anti Semitic crew members that day, let me tell you. some good hummus. Howard. It's a really interesting choice to give uh, this guy a real panty waist son, huh? Thought he was going to play Crocodile Rock there for a second. Have uh, heaven have no uh, wrath like a woman who's mad or something. That's the saying, right? Hell have no fury. That's it. Like a woman scorned. Oh, I got it. Okay. Thumbs I really didn't uh, take me a second here. Uh, give her a kiss, baby. Yeah, give her those Jan Michael Juicy lips. 
pectorals like two Christmas hams. That'd be a weird thing to say looking through binoculars if somebody didn't know what you were actually referring to. Just look like you're looking through someone's window and then you say, he's coming. Maybe that's just the dirty mind of Jan Michael thinking, but... I like that. I kind of like this scene. All right. Yep. Interesting. Oh, she got the better of him on this one, huh? I mean, that would just blow your ear off. You just can't nick an earlobe. Oh, come on, that's stupid. It's a lot of arsenal. Absolutely not. Get down. Get out of there. Get out of there. Romeo? Well, what I miss? The cat got behind the TV, and I was afraid he was going to fucking knock it off. Now I'm back. This is Mike. We got... Jesus. Um, what was I riffing on as Jan Michael? Ooh, kablooey. He's got two down, Daddy. Somehow, Airwolf, the helicopter's gotten less believable as the series has gone on. It's not a good sign, right? Heck of a maneuver. The 
I could shoot him with like a rope or something. Uh oh. Don't do it, baby. Don't shoot him. Oh, they blast him with a missile or something. Now, I guess we would say that Hawk isn't going to do anything if she shot him because he wouldn't be able to tell that she was just nicking him, right? Yeah. No shit. I'm fluent in that language too, Ernie. I did actually find that funny. And I'll tell you what I didn't find funny were those racist jokes at lunch by that jerk in the beginning. All right, that's the end of the fucking episode. I will see you next week. I'm getting out of here before the cat fucking does some shit again. All right, bye.